what do you think the United States reaction to this? Because literally last week we were on this show talking about how Ilian Omar is like, oh, he's a, he's a dictator. And even, even watching the mainstream media this morning, I'm like, how is America going to react to this? They had to say he won by, oh, they said over 80% of the vote. I'm like, you guys can't even say 85, can you? You son of a <laughs> bitches. You can't even say it. But like they had to say over 80. They had to say he's overwhelming. They said, whoa, it's draconian. They, he, they always bring up the draconian thing with the gang members. And it's like, okay, how do you think the United States government, the, the politically, is going to react to this groundswell because they're used to dictators in this in Central America, and America has a long, rich history of backing whatever dictator. You know, like we we helped Pinochet commit all of these atrocities because he was favorable to us. Uh, you know, um, what's his name? Chavez in Venezuela didn't want to play ball with the United States. Oh, suddenly we call him a terrorist, even though he had this one of the second most world's oil. Manuel reserves. Noriega. Yeah. You know, pineapple face. One day he's America's best friend. Next day he's America's number one enemy. So they don't, I think America doesn't know how to deal with Bukele because he's not this, he doesn't have the power hungry that those guys had that they can, he's giving money back to his citizens by letting them own Bitcoin. Like you said, it's a global movement. They're what the State Department is well aware of the lines around the El Salvador and embassies all around the world. How do you think it's like now Bukele, he's got another five years. Look what he's done in this first five years. It's going to be this country is going to be unstoppable. Does, does, does the United States try to double down on this like stupid letter that Ilian Omar said about draconian blah, blah, blah? Or are they going to just go, yay, we like him? I mean, because well, you mentioned John F. Kennedy before, and President Bukele is of JFK level political genius in a lot of ways, who is uh, somebody that you can um, ask any question at any time and he'll give you a brilliant answer. And it's all out of his own thoughts. And he doesn't have a coterie of handlers or speechwriters. It's all basically in his head that he carries around his vision, his mission, in the rhetoric, his rhetorical. Uh, expertise and delivering all these things. And I would recommend people tune in and find the press conference that he just did uh, right before the election mm -hmm. for people like the BBC and others. And they asked him these questions and his response is uh, brilliant. You know, essentially that um, he don't ask me to follow your recipes to combat our problems because I don't ask you to use what we use to combat our problems, to fix your problems. It's stuff that works in your country, you use it to fix your problems. Stuff that works in our country, we're happy to use it because it works for us in our country. We are two separate countries. And you know, if your recipes worked, you know, you would have a, an outcome that I think would be more admirable. Our recipes seem to work, and that's why I've got this huge popularity. Uh, I'm completely within all of the laws and legal, um, um, uh, all the, the laws and, and the constitutional guidelines. It, it's completely coloring inside the lines, you know, these completely mm -hmm. uh, operating and democratically. Use, you, you point out they use paper ballots down here. They paper ballots. You can't drink for three days. You can't drink for three. There's been no alcohol here. And, right. and, you know, we have these electric voting machines in America that are hackable. It's on a Sunday. Everyone can vote. Everyone can vote. Right. So it's a free and accountable, fair vote, probably the highest, you know, uh, standard uh, anywhere. And, and so he brilliantly can really defend himself in that way. So they can't find anybody who can, who can stump him, let's say in an interview or say anything that he doesn't have. And look at the way he trolls on Twitter, uh, the way uh, so he responds so to folks on Twitter. He, you know, he does, they, they compare him to Donald Trump, but Donald Trump was very, you know, meat, meat, um, ham handed, I think is, you know, he's very crude. Uh, whereas uh, President Bukele is, you know, subtle and nuanced, historically, um, you know, uh, uh, contextualized. And, and uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, the US has a huge problem at the border. They are being invaded at the border and uh, with the exception of one country, and that's El Salvador. There's now, we're approaching reverse migration where more people are leaving or fleeing the US to go to El Salvador than the other way around. And that solves a problem for the US. And for this reason, the US Justice Department and others in the administration are kind of like, you know what? 
okay, he, he, let's just maybe just leave this guy alone because he's actually solving a problem that we have this festering problem at our border. It also shines a huge light. You bring up such a great point. It shines a huge light on the border problem. Well, why is there, why do these people want to walk a thousand miles? Why is life in their country so awful? Well, if you really dig deep, it's usually some sort of American sanction or war or something. America has helped create this border crisis. And then again, Bukele, why it's so great and why it's, an, it, it, like you say, it's, an, it's a global movement. He's giving his citizens life. Nobody needs to leave. So then it, right. it shines a light on, well, why is it so bad in all these other countries? Exactly. You know, we've helped destabilize. The United States has helped destabilize Venezuela because they won't give up their oil. Exactly. And that's why people want to leave there. And then, then we, we try to put in that Juan Guaido, that CIA puppet, which is just like, hi, I work for the CIA. I'm the new leader. And everyone's like, who is this guy? We, we've – and we, we allow – I mean, look, America is the biggest consumer of illegal narcotics. Mm -hmm. So why are everyone and why probably and a multitude of reasons, not the least of which is the life in America is not great. We've talked about this. It's that's why people feel like they have to check out. So what he what Bukele is doing here is shining a light on all of the problems and how to fix them. If, Absolutely. If, 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 all, if all of Latin America had nice, stable governments where they were safe, no one would need to come to America. No, I, you know, he's the exception that is making everyone look bad. But in, in that way, it's similar to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is money that makes all of the money look terrible. And because before Bitcoin, people would say, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, there's no other choice. Uh, Friedrich Hayek famously said, Austrian economist, that, you know, you're never going to have good money because you'll never get government out of money unless there was some kind of sly workaround. And this was said in the 80s. And it was just like a thought experiment. Well, Bitcoin is that sly workaround. You've separated money from state. And people didn't really think that was ever going to be possible. And so now you have this Austrian economics experiment which now become reality. And what we see what happens with private money, with money that's separate from the state. It's not state controlled. And I always say that money existed before the state. Bitcoin separates money from state. Bitcoin kills the state, essentially. And I mean... In the case of El Salvador, you're seeing the state being reinvented, statecraft and statehood being reinvented in a, in a new 21st century Bitcoin powered way, where um, I think in the case of what I call Bukelianomics, Bukelianomics, you know, he's all about minimizing the state in terms of its budget, in terms of its influence, in terms of its size. But at the same time, he's building things like the public library and other public spaces. He wants the public spaces to be the best looking and the best spaces in the country, not the private, doesn't want the private homes necessarily to be the best looking place. He wants the public spaces. And that's why a lot of people, you know, look at Greece, look at, look at Rome, look at these countries where, look at Paris. I mean, there was a great emphasis on the public yeah. domain. We're building public spaces and in, in, in these, in these monuments to the genius of the human mind, uh, which we, I think we've lost uh, a lot American of American cities tried to emulate that initially, like New York back in the day, Chicago tried to build these parks and these great big buildings and train stations and libraries that were fantastic. Washington, D.C. is yeah. just mimicked on a yeah. European city. And But now it's completely evaporated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it all gets back to economics. So, I mean, you know, we like you're left of center, I'm right of center. You know, one thing where the lefties are good at enumerating are the number of countries that America has invaded and fucked over, right? I mean, this is something that the, the, on the right, they tend to position this as, well, we're great and we should rule the world. You know, like the Lynn Cheney's or yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of mindset, which I, I don't truck with that. I don't think that's, that's not mm -hmm. great. But where the, the lefties kind of fall down is talking about how the money itself mm. is a huge problem because you know then then it becomes like well um and and i was actually yeah i mean that, that, that so there's a lot of like now coming to to some kind of consensus on where there's agreement where there's disagreement because it's essentially it's an existential crisis we were i think in the united states like people genuinely feel like their 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 countries and livelihoods are slipping away and they really need to put down the hat, bury the hatchet, whatever this is, they, they need to come together and figure out a way because otherwise they're just going to lose it, lose it all. 